Welcome to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Good evening, folks, and thank you for joining us on another edition of DAX Machina. Joining me in the studio is Robbie Rip Reigns. Doc won't be with us tonight, so he is uh, swamped with orders in the, in the shop. And uh, so, far, unfortunately, Steve has to work tonight, so he's just going to put up with the two of us. Uh, MK Davis should be joining us shortly. Uh, he's having some technical difficulties we've been trying to, to get sorted out for the last few minutes. But hopefully we'll have that going here for you here in just a few minutes. Robbie, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Feels like I ain't seen you since last year, but <laughs> it, yeah, it has it has been th yeah last year. Yeah, holy crap, has it been that long? I, I we ain't talked since twenty. Well, we ain't talked on the show since twenty twenty three. This is our first show of the new year, so it is. Let's hope we uh, let's hope we uh, are off to a good start. Hopefully, the uh, the technical issues won't be uh, indicative for the rest of the year to come. Let's hope not. But it wouldn't be one of our shows without some kind of technical difficulties. That is a fact. Difficulties. It's kind of a truism of uh, of how how things generally turn out for us. Somebody mentions a certain satellite, or we start getting on a roll, and things just fall apart. Yeah. Uh, that that do seem to be how it go. Hey, uh, check this out. Uh, a friend of mine sent this to me. I like it. London. American Werewolf in London. Yep, and I've got my Believe in Yourself, even when no one else does, what Taylor and Tyler gave me for Christmas. <laughs> Heck yeah. It's like we got a pretty good, pretty full house already tonight. Yeah. Uh, here's hoping. Chat's, chat's popping. Heck yeah. Thank you all That's for fine. being here tonight. We sure appreciate it. Hope you guys had a good, a good holiday. Um, you hope you guys had a, had the the very best of Christmases and and the, hopefully your new year is off to a banging start as well. Um, I've, I've been talking to Tombs here the last few days and it always just strikes me weird that you know it's middle of summer over there. It's got to be odd to have. Well, it's normal to them, but it's got to. It seems odd to me that our seasons are completely reversed. So Christmas is in the dead of summer over there. I can't imagine. Well, I could totally could do it. So I, I can see me, you know, barbecuing on Christmas Day in a pair of Bermuda shorts and an ugly T-shirt, flip flops. Well, what got me is Tim sent, uh, told me uh, Happy New Year's the day before New Year's. And I'm like, that's just that's just weird. <laughs> we, we had a whole conversation about. That. I'm like, so how's 2024 going so far? <laughs> I said, do I need to be worried about anything? He, Tomb says living on the sun sucks. Ugh. Tammy says, so glad y'all are back, but I have to leave for work at the hospital at 515. Have a great show, guys. Oh, my, I bought the, bought the shirt Robbie has on for my grandson. <laughs> yep, my daughter and her boyfriend got this for me for Christmas. Well, it's a good one. I like it. Yep. Uh, okay, MK's messaging me. He says, uh, new computer phone won't work either. Weird. Right, hang on a second. Um, Yeah, he said he can't get it to even come up on his phone or anything, which is really bizarre. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's there on the stream, but it just won't show up on the... Yeah, yeah, it says we've got him, but nothing's coming through. Uh, hey, Miss Neoma's in the house. Miss Naoma. Miss Naoma. <laughs> See what Kay Bauer said? The screen's blurry, so me and you were secretly mm -hmm. Sasquatches. But yeah, that's it. Through the profile. <laughs> there you go. Well, 
Oh, sorry. Been uh, fighting a head cold the last few days, so my apologies. Glad my internet's working again, finally. I felt like the Amish for like a week. <laughs> I asked him if he'd shaved his mustache yet and left his beard growing. Said we were considering building a barn in the backyard. You never realize how much you, you depend on the internet until it just con conks out. Yep. And the really, really stupid part was we were completely shut down. And when the tech guy here, the tech guy got here, I tried to get talking to the people on the, on the, on uh, at bright speed. I tried talking to him on the phone to do it, do it myself. Couldn't get it to work. The, the tech finally shows up Tuesday morning, five minutes. You know, there you go. There's your problem. I'm like, of course, what the hell? Derek Buckle says, I'm looking Amish as well. Yeah, the beard's getting a little thick. It may be a little time, about time to get it trimmed. Well, it doesn't look like MK's going to be able to make it in. Well, I guess uh, I guess we can we can talk about stuff uh, on our own. I think Noah's popped in and said, hey. Yep. Uh, well, we'll see if MK can, can make it in here shortly. If not, when you know, we'll just continue talking. Um, We've done it before. We were gonna, yeah, we're going to be talking about you know, regardless whether whether MK can join us, we're going to be talking about Cajun legends, including the Rougarou, Paramalfe, uh, and the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Um, reason I thought of having MK on this was it wasn't too long ago. My wife and I were rewatching some of the old Expedition X's with Josh with Josh Gates, and they did a thing on the Honey Island Swamp Monster, and they interviewed MK. And I'm like, I know MK, and I'd like to talk about the Honey Island Swamp Monster. So I reached out to him, and we were going to do it last week, but then my internet took a big dump. I don't know if you guys can hear me wheezing, but I'm still rattling. So you see me chewing on something that's not candy. It's a cough drop. He's in the Probably. hall for medicine. Yeah. Yeah, it is halls. Um, here's a question. Oh, let's see. Is MK maybe here? Well, maybe not. I was hoping. Yeah. So what was your question? <laughs> Have you looked at the tracks that the, that are left behind by the Honey Island Swamp Monster? Yeah, I it, those are the three toed tracks, right? Yeah, the three toed lot, the yeah, end. look a lot like the that one set of three toed tracks that they found near in, Falk. Uh, near Falk, yes, I have. Look, they look a lot alike. Um, and that's that's kind of that that's kind of an oddity. That's that there's not other than some of the tracks they found here in South Carolina around the where the Scape or swamp monster is supposed mm -hmm. to be. There's not really a whole lot of other places that, and I'm sure Although, there have been. The Lake Worth monster in Texas supposedly had three toes as well. Well, that's what I was about to say. There, there's a, there is a very few, but that's not something that's like really, really big, and you know, it, it's not put out there a lot other than those those few. So it's kind of like an, an oddity uh, almost. So Casey almost, Calloway says kind of like an elongated alligator track. That's kind of what I thought too. Yeah. <clears throat> it and, would be a big dang gator. But it would make sense in the Lizard Man Escape or Swamp. But the Honey Island Swamp Monster, the Falk Monster, all those have been described as Bigfoot type creatures. Right. Well, yeah. you know, but they also say the Gugway has a three toed track. Well, and but I've heard people say that that's, they thought that's what might have have made those tracks down around Falk was mm -hmm. a good way instead of the, what well, you start looking at the, uh, go back and think about a lot of the, um, the eyewitness testimonies from the legend of Boggy Creek. Mm -hmm. Start listening to that and start thinking about some of the things we talk about, about the good way. There's a lot of that, those eyewitness accounts that really make it sound like that's what was, what was stalking around down there. Well, especially as aggressive as it was. Yeah. So. Well, uh, 
you know, they, they uh, there's plenty of game down on, on Honey Island. There's wild boar, there's gators, there's deer. deer. There there's is all kinds, kinds of, of stuff down there for something that big to eat. Mm-hmm. Raccoons, uh, moles, uh, possums. Uh, wh- yeah, what's up, mink? Because uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of. I mean, that's that's how Cajuns make their living, and is and not just their living, but that's how they survive is off the land down there. So I mean. Keep your fingers crossed. Well, Mr. Davis, can you hear us? We we're getting partial. closer. We'll, yeah, we're getting, getting closer. Uh, T. Davis says, boar everywhere in Louisiana now, messing up everything. Those mm. feral hogs are a problem everywhere they appear. Speaking of feral hogs, did you see that video that was making the, the rounds? I think you and I did discuss it once about the, the, the tracks in, the, in the, the dirt that they claimed were Bigfoot tracks and the hog that had been torn yeah. in half. Yeah, the, uh, I think, didn't Tomb send that to us? Yeah. Yeah. It was Australians had found it, I believe. Yeah. And no, uh, Greg sent that to us. That's right. We were were talking about that in that, in that little group, me and you and Greg have. And it was almost like, yes, Medley, uh, Honey Island is down by Slidell, Louisiana, down in Southern Louisiana. Yep. Dang near to the Gulf. Right near where my uncle lived before he died. Um, yeah, we got to talking about that and how, Put together that scene look but yeah to me it just looked felt staged yeah especially since if that hog had been torn apart there there would have been blood all over the place its entrails would be hanging out that was a mm-hmm. hog that had been cut in half and then placed there and those guys were not really they were just like hey uh, 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 look it's been torn in half there would have yeah, been a lot was freaking out yeah but uh, but going back to the the Honey Island thing, yeah, a lot of those tracks look exactly the same as the tracks that have been described and even photographed in the Scape War Swamp and uh, Falk and in uh, Lake Worth in Texas. So, but we talked about range about these things. I mean, these big predators like that are going to have a a huge range that they're going to travel on Mm -hmm. so it's you know it's not beyond the realm of possibility especially uh between falc and honey island that that's that's not that far for something like that to be traveling within you know the a year's time frame so that's and maybe pushing it going back the other way from louisiana to south carolina maybe but that's that might be kind of pushing it well, but, if it stayed fairly coastal, it could stick to the swamps pretty much all the way up there. Yeah, yeah, I guess it could. I, I, I still think that might be pushing the, the outer limits of a of a range, but I would, still, yeah, I, I mean, would say that'd be a hell of a range. Yeah, but it's still, I mean, it's possible, and it, but it still could be the same type of creature, not maybe, maybe not the same group, but exact creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you know, like if somebody spots a Bigfoot in in Oregon doesn't mean it's part of the same group that somebody spots in East Texas. True. No, no, that's a hell of a range. But something like that, that, you know, we speculate that it could have what we say, like 2,000 to 2,500 mile range. It could be more than that. Especially if there's, if it's a big group, like, like say, you know, a troop of chimpanzees is what, 20 or 30 Mm -hmm. or more sometimes. If you got a group that size, it would have to have a massive range because you wouldn't be, it wouldn't be able to, or they wouldn't be able to have enough food. Yeah, if they stayed in a small area, they'd eat everything edible in yeah. a fairly short amount of time. So it would have to be at least what we say 2,000, 2,500, if not bigger. You know, I've, I've run into that problem, though. 
Have you not had not had that had a similar experience? I mean, how many times have you hunted a, a plot of land and there've been deer there every year, but then and all of a sudden there's not. nothing. Yep. Keep your fingers crossed. Uh, looks like it's not working. Really? Crap. But yeah, you're right as far as I'm trying to think how I guess about five or six years ago, give or take, I had a buddy that uh his parents owned uh or his parents didn't own it, but they were part of a hunting club down in uh Greenwood County, which is not far from, from me. I even went down there and hunted a couple of times with them. But this like Brian would harvest big deer every single year, every year. And about five or six years ago, it just dried up. And I mean, this is like, they had this, and they had, they had rules and regulations. You could, you know, you could take one doe and one buck and the buck had to be, you know, they, they had their specifications and stuff like that. So it's not like it was being overhunted. Cause you're talking about 10 people that are hunting probably 450 acres to 500 acres, something like that. So that's not, that's not an over hunting situation right. when you're only taking, you know, you got 10 people and they're only take allowed to take two, maybe three deer a piece a year. That's not going to over hunt that much property. All of a sudden it just, they just dry up and, course they, they think oh well it's the coyotes that are pushing them out and all that kind of stuff but, but you know, sure. some, some sort of predator is pushing them out i'm not sure it's coyotes pushing them because i'm when i say big deer i'm talking they there were some big deer down there i don't see a, you know a bunch of little scrawny coyotes pushing some of them big deer out that's the way it is up near in northern missouri and up near iowa because down here in missouri the deer are more scrub fed they'll, they'll feed off you know your, your typical plants and acorns and stuff like that but up in northern Missouri, in in Iowa, there's so much corn. The deer are just huge up there. Uh, but I don't like hunting up that way because the regulations are different. You can only hunt with a shotgun. They don't want a deer rifle cartridge because cartridge would travel so far. Derek, I, I don't know what, what is considered normal for that. I've heard, and this, this is what I've heard, that you want about, I want to say, anywhere from 50 ish acres a person so if you've got let's say you've got 100 acres you don't want no more than two to three people hunting hunting that and so when i say it's 450 500 acres and it's not like all 10 of those people were hunting at the same time because some people work different so it's family owned they could go throughout the entire week so they would have their roster set up of okay you know, Ronnie and Brian are hunting these these days, and then Ronnie's brother and his sons will be hunting these days. So they there was never more than two or three people out there at the same time hunting that. But I've always heard it's you know roughly around fifty acres per person. And that's just what I've heard. I don't know that that's you know a hundred percent accurate or not, but that's just what I've always heard. Robert D says up here in northeastern Missouri, does will hit 160 to 180 pounds easy, and we can use high power rifles. That's really good. I'm glad, you know, it's like I, I wouldn't mind coming up a hunting situation like that. But I've got a buddy that that uh, grew up in Iowa, and they were only allowed to use slugs and in in, in shotguns and because of those cornfields. There's nothing to stop it. I mean, you could shoot half a mile down the road and hit somebody's house. That's why 3030 is such a popular gun up around here because I they call it the brush gun. Mm -hmm. But uh two seventies, thirty thirties, those are those are about uh, the most popular hunting guns around here. I mean like my dad's hunting a ten point right now in between our houses. We got a ten point this walk in the field in between our houses and he's been hunting it well <clears throat> he didn't get it and yesterday was his last or day four yesterday was the last day of hunting season up here so i said oh well sorry dad <laughs> it's always next year 
Definitely. I said he'll be bigger next year if nobody runs him over. But, you know, he'd still make a nice set of antlers if you find his sheds. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about uh, one weekend when I'm off walking up through there and see once it gets to that point. It's starting to look like we're not going to be able to get MK tonight. <clears throat> well, I'll keep my fingers crossed. It ain't over uh, Robert yet. D says Iowa and Illinois has now has high power rifle season. I'll always use the thirty out six iron iron sights and took mini deer. I'd like to take my uh, my uh, my new uh, M1 Garand. That thing that thing's a nail driver. I'd put one down for sure. You know, thirty out six will do the damage. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hunt with a 308, so I mean, I can't say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I don't like to have to shoot twice. So, you know, back to the the three toed tracks. Tell me, tell me more about what, 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 how would the foot on something like that work? I mean, it'd be basically very alien compared to the way we walk. Honestly, <laughs> the mechanics of how something like it would have to be really big and really spread out to support the weight and locomotion of something as big and tall as that is these things have been reported to be because there, I, 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 I don't know how something like that works. I mean, Personally, I think what what you might be looking at is maybe something that's been injured or maybe a birth defect or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, do you think, it's, you think it's something that's, you know, the three toes, do you think that's part of the species or do you think it's an inbreeding thing? Maybe it's an inbreeding thing. I don't, I mean, it may be a, a species thing, but, you know, we'll, we know for sure that most things like albinism is not something that occurs regularly in in the wild because they're not going to make it because they can't camouflage. So if they're a predator, they can't hunt. If they're prey, they can't hide. So things like that, it tends to work itself out but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So that's why I think the, the sheer lack of t times that you've actually seen this and just, just in random certain places, that's what makes me kind of lean towards maybe it's just something in the genetics that it happens every so often or something like that, you know, because as far as I can remember in the, as, as Fout goes, that one trackway was the only one that they ever found. I know they found several over a different time over a different time period in Lake Worth, and they found several over time over a different time period at uh, Scape Or. But it's not like it's a consistent. You know, like other Bigfoot tracks are found consistently. You know, here, there, everywhere, but those are only found in certain areas. And there's not a whole lot of them. So that just kind of makes me think it's just something that's some kind of genetic. But still says, could it be an adaptation to the environment? I don't know why, what kind of adaptation that would be. What, what um, the advantage Derek of Ruffles that? Says, could it be growing together of toes for the type of area, swamp? I, if it was adapting to have webs between their feet so they could move better in, in the swamp, maybe, but I just don't understand. I don't see, and there again, this is this is my opinion. I just don't see that being any or having an advantageous outcome. I, I just also you would think with the three-toed tracks, 
that the center toe would be the longest of the three. Uh, you know, otherwise it'd look pretty weird if it was, you know, the toes were set up like a human foot. Yeah. <laughs> With the bigger well, toes leading down to the small toe. Well, our toes are set or our feet are set that way because of the way we stand. And if it was the opposite way, we'd bow our feet in and we wouldn't have the stability right. we have. So if you only got three toes, it would ha it would stand a reason. I mean, think about a lot of the dinosaur tracks that you see, that center toe is the longest one. Look at bird tracks, the center toe is the longest one. Mm -hmm. So that's things so like to that. Me, that would be make, make the most sense for weight distribution. Yeah. So that's what tends to make me think that it, it, it is just some kind of genetic anomaly, birth defect, maybe some kind of predisposition that every so often, just like albinism or things like that, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. Now, right. in, in captivity, you can, you can select selectively breed for albinos, you know, you can do all that kind of stuff, but that doesn't happen like that in the wild. So that's, I, that's just why I think it's something like that. If we saw as many of the three toe tracks as we saw regular tracks, obviously that wouldn't hold water, but when you don't see as many of them as, as you see, I, I just think that lends to something that doesn't happen a whole lot. It's just, well, when it comes to the Honey Island Swamp Monster, and again, I wish we could get MK in on this conversation. Uh, the guy that originally spotted the thing was was a guy it was named Harlan Ford. And this was back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, I believe he was an air traffic controller in his day life, daily, daily so, life. Yeah. Uh, and he hunted this area of the, of the Honey Island for years and years and years. And one time while out there, he saw this thing. Uh, apparently it was squatted down near the edge of the water possibly over a kill. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but, you know, then he became obsessed with finding it again. And finally, he did manage to catch uh, some some footage that's pretty clear. Uh, and, and, you know, MK is the is the footage expert. That's why I was really hoping to be able to discuss that with him. I'm hoping he can, he can, we can get this figured out and get him on here because I know he's got a much better perspective than I've got on this. But oh, yeah. the, the tracks he found were three-toed. But the images he captured looks very much like a, a, a Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot. It it's bipedal. It's covered in dark hair. It's moving. Uh, it's moving. You can see its arm swing. Uh, the the uh, the Harlan Harlan Ford footage is really compelling. In fact, it's some of the best footage I've seen. Have you watched that footage? Oh yeah, I've seen probably. I think uh, the first time I ever saw Mr. Davis was uh, when he was on the uh, uh, the old show we were talking about with Josh Gates. Mm -hmm. um, so I've seen that one, and I think they showed a, a few snippets of it on that one. Yeah, they showed was, a few, several seconds of the video. There was another one that was just, I can't remember where I saw it, but it was just, it just titled The Honey Island Swamp Monster, and it was completely and totally all about that, but it had more of a small town monsters feel to it. It was not a, mm -hmm. like a big discovery channel production. I don't think, uh, that one actually had, uh, what's the, uh, Terrence from swamp people, you know, cause mm -hmm. he, uh, his wife is actually the granddaughter or daughter of Mr. Ford. I, I can't remember. If he, I think it might be granddaughter. Yeah. But his granddaughter he, still, still shows yeah. the film and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, but they actually, she was actually on a, uh, they, they said, showed her on an episode of Swamp People. And then he was on another episode. Was, they were talking about it. So, Miss Naoma says her name is Dana Holyfield, and you can find the original film on her channel. Yep, that's it. And her husband's the big guy that, uh, um, I think he wears it like a, either a Dale Earnhardt Sr. or a Dale Earnhardt Jr. hat most of the time. Big guy. One I always wears a sleeveless shirt. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't know. You know from granted, I'm I, I don't I don't make any claims of being any kind of expert, but I, I'm wondering if the, the these these sightings of Bigfoot type creatures with three toes, if it's either a regional variance or it might be a Gugway. And, and, and you know it could very well be something like that. I, I, like I said, I I think. The outliers like 
Falk and mm -hmm. even I would love to get a side by side comparison of the prints taken from Honey Mile, Honey Island with those three toed tracks found in Falk, Arkansas. Well hold that thought. Thad Brown says, you ever think of having Josh Gates on the show? I've reached out. I've never heard back. I've got no, uh, I've got an email that I've tried to use, uh, but I've never received a response and I have no contact with Josh. I yeah, wish we, I did. Well, we, we've, uh, we've talked, or I've talked to Adam about it and that's. Well, we've, we're, we're a pretty small channel, so I don't, yeah. I think it'd be, be pretty bizarre for Josh Gates to agree to come on the show. That, that's I a would love to have him. That's a hope and a prayer. Yeah. Uh, Robert D says, wasn't the 1970s Momo monster a three toed? You know, I believe it was. I believe the, the tracks found up by Louisiana, Missouri had three toes. I, I would have to verify that, but I'm pretty sure the tracks they found there along, along the, uh, hey, along maybe the river I, I don't remember. If, I just remember watching that. What was the two guys? The one that said he could talk to the, talk to it. Another guy. Yeah. Miss Naoma, that would be awesome. I'd love to have a copy of that. Um, I would like to do a side by side comparison of the three toed three toed tracks from from uh, Honey Island and the one from Falk. Do you have a? Uh, do you know if there's uh, any published photos of the tracks from Falk, Robbie? Robbie? I'm I'm looking right now. I, matter of fact, there it is, right there. When I went down there, I, I took pictures of all those tracks I had, and I thought I took mm -hmm. a picture of the three toed track. So. Stand by one. Miss Lene says they were three toed. I thought they were. Uh, Wyatt Estes says you did get Jeff Meldrum, and MK, and Doug Highcheck. True, but uh, yeah, I was uh, was pretty fortunate to be able to find contact information for them. I met MK on on uh, Facebook through Facebook. Uh, Doctor Meldrum, we were able to find his his uh, email address through his university, and Doug Highcheck, I uh, met him on Facebook as well. Uh, but you know, just all those, those guys are all awesome guests. Uh, and I do want to see if I can get both of them, both Mel, uh, Dr. Meldrum and, and Mr. Hycheck back as well. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't, I don't have not been fortunate enough to find a, a direct contact link with Josh Gates. And, and again, you know, like I said, we're not a very big channel, so we we may not even show up on his radar. Yeah. Well, and like I said, I've I've talked to Adam, who has been on a TV show with him, and mm -hmm. he said he's he's very hard to get in touch with for stuff like that. Anyway, so well, the dude's got what like four TV shows running at the same yeah. time. Dude's probably busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. Did you get it? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up and share it on the screen. Um, it's not the greatest picture, but that I mean that's it. That's that is a cast of the actual track from. Hey, this is the cast. From Falk, Arkansas. Let me uh, see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to stop sharing and, and download it before I can zoom in on it. Now, give me just a second. Okay, there we go. Now let me share the screen. Sorry. And you jump through a couple of hoops. What's that? <laughs> so I need taking the pictures to come in handy some point. Okay. This is Sulphur River Falk, June ninth, uh, June twenty twelve. This was cast in twenty twelve, so this was not part of the original Falk casting. Yep. But well, I could probably. There was more than one down there, so I could from my phone I couldn't see which ones I was, but that is the three toed one that I. Okay, well look at this track, again you're the you're the tracker. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this track over and then zoom it back in. Look at look at the toes, do they look deformed? That's, that's what I'm talking about. They, this I mean, one over here, this one here that kind of curves out, and it almost looks like there's a spot where another toe would be. Yep. like part of its part of its foot's missing. Like I said, to me, it almost 
has to be something like a birth defect or something that's passed, you know, that's in, in a, maybe a certain clan or mm -hmm. group or whatever that gets yeah, passed possibly, along. Possibly inbreeding, but that almost looks like a deformed, like it's deformed. Yeah, like a birth defect. Yeah. Or possibly, you know, like maybe might have like an alligator took it took part of its foot off when it was young and that's healed. But that that just doesn't look normal to me. Granted, I, again, I'm no freaking expert, but just looking at that, it just seemed really bizarre. I'm looking oh, against it. Have I... Mr. It might have Mr. Davis. <clears throat> I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Well, nope, we lost him again. Okay, let's see. Uh, Miss Naoma is going to send me uh, one of the pictures that she got. Hopefully, she'll send that to me here in just a second. I know I got a picture of that other one, but I'm trying to... There we go, hopefully. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Sam Hain 11 says step near a snapping turtle or Sally T says caught in a trap. Yeah. Any of that could have happened. Um, Casey Calloway says, do the three toed tracks come with aggressive sightings in most of the cases where I've, uh, I've read where there've been three toed tracks. Those are where you get your aggressive stories. So I don't know if it's, it's, you know, ca which causes the, which causes one or the other. I don't know what the causation or, or, or effect is, but it seems to me that whenever we've got three-toed tracks, we do get aggressive sightings. <clears throat> Smedley do right says MK Davis's connection is cursed. Sounds like, or it looks like it. Audacious Annie. Uh, what is it? Audacious Amber says, I heard a story out of Gila National Park about five crawlers taking down a dog man. Hey, if you've got a source for that, send me the link. I would love to check that out. Uh, That's the only super, one I got in the three toed, and I guess it was the not the original one. I'm sorry. Uh, super Mastermind says, Gators exist in New York City sewers. They eat rats. It's warmer down there. Repair crews go down there with shotguns. Well, I would too if there are freaking gators down there. Tomb says it sounds like our big murder bird tracks. Yeah. It, you know, any large bird like that, you know, that would leave a big, ugly, weird looking three toed track. So I imagine cassowary birds or emus or ostriches would all have a pretty weird looking big three toed track. Little Patty says alligator bit the toes off. Maybe that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like it, it's either scar tissue or just a, like a birth defect. But, Especially if there's not a huge breeding population of these things, it would not be uncommon for them. And to, the thing uh, is, yes, it's possible that alligator could have bit <clears throat> the toes off, but showing up in different places at different times, that's what makes me think that there's some kind of, some kind of genetic thing, whether it be from through inbreeding or, just just a, a birth defect that just happens because maybe because of something they they eat that are that's in that area i mean maybe there's some kind of i don't know but i i, I just think that that kind of everything kind of leans and lines up to that to me that's just my gut feeling about it awesome uh, <clears throat> Miss Naoma, Miss Naoma came through. Hey, I see, I see him. Hey, we've got him. All right. I'm on my phone. I could not get my computer to, to log in. Well, at least we got you. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it wasn't easy on my phone. Uh, I, last time I used StreamYard, it was just couple of clicks but not so now they said it changed to stream labs yeah so, stream yeah. labs so, bottom out yeah well anyway i'm here i'm sorry about the late not a problem late log in. Ah, you're here that's <laughs> all that matters all right and we don't have to flounder around anymore 
I sure had, I sure hate I had to, uh, you know, cause that. Oh, yeah. it, it it happens. It, it it wouldn't be one of our shows if we didn't have some technical glitches somewhere. I've got to I've got to look into it and see what the problem is. And I I'm sure it's something like you know one of the windows security things or something. <laughs> So we've already kind of been talking about the Honey Island Swamp Monster a little bit. I know you've been down there. You've you've actually been into Honey Island on a number oh, many, of occasions. Many times. Uh, um, it's, it's, the Honey Island is, is sort of like a... I mean, there is a Honey Island, but it's in general, it's referring to... People refer to Honey Island as an area. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's that those woods are vast. Uh, and he's not the the monster or the creature is not bound to just be on the island. Um, I have come to find out over the years that there's a pattern to where it's going to be and what time of the year. Uh, like it's like, like it's uh, like it has a range. Yeah, right. Right now, it's not. It's not on the island. I can't. If it goes like it's been going for the last few years, it's probably not on the island. It's on an area that's that that does not allow hunting. Do you uh, do you think there's any connection between the the Honey Island Swamp Monster having three toes and the three toed tracks found near Falk, Arkansas? I don't know, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, they have very poor photos of those tracks, and the tracks cast burned up in a service station fire. Uh, so it doesn't give you a lot to work with there. The, the Honey Island track has been a kind of a conundrum. You know, uh, that's why uh, they show it to academics. And well, this academics, is the Honey Island track. Right, right. I've got a copy of that. Uh, I got from Perry Ford. Uh, at one time, I didn't put much stock in it. Uh, I, I didn't find anything myself for a number of years. And, you know, uh, it, you, you're looking for something that's rare anyway. I mean, if you just can just go down there and find it, it would have been already discovered. Yeah. Uh, it. I'd given up on it and pretty much written it off as maybe perhaps a hoax or, or just, uh, you know, uh, just Swamp a myth. Tale. Yeah. But, uh, I took my wife down to, I think it's, uh, what do you call that clinic down there in New Orleans? Uh, Oster or something. I forgot the name of it. It's a famous clinic. Uh, she was, she had a good friend that was being treated for cancer. She went down there to stay with her friend and I just came back by there just unannounced. The first time I did that, I came right in behind some severe weather and it had quit raining about 10 minutes and I got out. I made my way across that canal uh, over one of the locks and uh, there's a trail goes alongside the canal and I followed that trail and I came across this broken limb, freshly broken that had been deliberately made into an X across that trail. Of course that, that got my attention because I've been in this, this field of study long enough to know that that's significant. Hmm. And I looked down in the, where it broke the limb off the tree, broke us a little sapling, the whole top out of it. And it had no water in it from the rain. So I realized that it had just been done. That was the first time. The following June, I had occasion to go back down there again. There again, unannounced, I just went for another reason completely and I swung back by there it was spontaneous an impromptu visit and I went into the woods and immediately left the trails got off trail and I felt like that that 
that if there were a human being out there hoaxing it or anything, I would get well away from where that would be done. And I, I came across a fresh track, three-toed track, just like you see on that cast, except it was bigger than the cast. How and big it would was, you estimate it to be? Oh, uh, heck, I got it right. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't. I got a picture of it. I didn't get make a cast of that one. Oh, shucks. I put my foot beside it, and I got a 12 foot, and it was bigger than that. Uh, you know, that's, I went down there kind of not expecting to stop. It's just something I just decided to do. Mm-hmm. So I was, I didn't have anything with me. I didn't have a tape measure or anything. All I had was my camera. And <clears throat> it, it kind of, I looked at it and and it was on a piece of a little bit of clay, you know, swamp, swamp type of terrain has layers. Mm. And when it gets real dry, that top will bake hard and underneath to be trap moisture. And sometimes it, that the clay will expand and, and come out through a weak spot in that crusty stuff above it and make what I call a spit or a dome of soft clay and that's what this was and it stepped on it and I, I looked I could I could see it plainly and and I thought to myself I, you know oh no uh, because I had written pretty much written it off of course I, if I had written it completely off in my mind I wouldn't have never stopped by there but I always want to give something the chance to be to work out, you know, and there it was. And, and it, it became kind of a, a quandary for me because after having expressed myself on what I thought was there or wasn't there, I felt like that I I needed to fully document this and then go back and do some walk some of that back. Because I, I owed it to uh, Miss Holyfield and and others, so I did that, and a- actually after that, I was able to uh, uh, get some copies of some photographs from way up north, but still in a swamp of the very same foot, very three toed. And so my confidence has built to the point where I went down there at night with uh, infrared. This was in November. And I got a video, a heat video of what I think was was one. Uh, and it's a uh, heck if I, I would share it, but I can't. Cool. Can't do it. Sorry. I, let me see if I can call it up uh, and just take a picture of it. Let's see here. I think I had that in. Natchez presentation. Uh, Should have another presentation here. I found a copy of a picture of a cast of uh, the Momo the Monster tracks from Louisiana, Missouri back in 72. And they are three-toed, but they don't look much like the Honey Island tracks. But uh, They're pretty, pretty uh, uh, kind of, kind of rougher looking. Yeah, uh, kind of squeezed up tighter. Um, How do they compare to that one I sent you from Falk, though? The one from Falk? Well, I just sent put it in the co-host chat, dude. Okay. 
but you take a look at it. I mean, you're the tracker. Here's the thermal. Here's the thermal here. Uh, if I can turn, how do you turn this around uh, to where I'm? I can. I, I guess I can do it this way, but I can't see what I'm doing. I don't see the uh, turnaround controls. I guess I'm stuck with this camera. Well, we're just happy we got you, so we're not going to worry yeah. about any of the technical end. Let me just see if I can do this here. You get it going. <laughs> can you see that? Uh, you're kind of off to the to the side, to the right side of it. I see the thermal. Yep. It's down on all fours. It was out across the water. <clears throat> Quite a ways away, actually. We tried to get it to run. It never would run, never moved. How big do you think it was? It's difficult to tell at that distance. You can see that it's uh, kind of on... Uh, all fours there. Mm -hmm. That's how Harlan Ford first saw it. When he came upon it was on all fours. And he. Uh, they, they thought it was a hog. And then when they got a little closer. They, it became alarmed and it stood up. And turned around and he said it was. It was just bizarre looking. It had huge amber eyes. And a kind of a mane of hair. And that's kind of what I see there. And I don't see the eyes, but I see that kind of a build mm -hmm. in that right there. Uh, so it, it uh, I feel like that probably was it. You know, uh, would have never got it on video of, of normal type video. Mm -hmm. But I was able to get it on the, uh, I have a pretty, uh, pretty uh, high-end binocular you know thermals mm -hmm. and and it, and it, it they can it can just capable of you know basic identification you know way out there uh it's it's for long distance and it this this was behind some uh some brush too also um let me see if i can find the uh, the other examples. You, uh, if I remember correctly, I remember watching a a documentary that you were part of. Uh, didn't you uh, find a set of of shoes that someone had made for hoaxing tracks down there at Honey Island? Yeah, that that's why my the the, the it sort of took the wind out of my sails. Uh, but but Dana said that somebody had taken one of her father's casts and used it to make the shoe. And after I found the, the evidence of my own, you know, unannounced where I couldn't be set up or hoaxed, I, I believe that that's correct. And people will do all kinds of things. That is very true. <laughs> that's what uh kind of astounds me these days because there's so many people are making uh bigfoot or dog man or whatever whatever cryptid photos using these ai programs and presenting them as real and it, as as those programs improve it's going to get harder and harder to tell yeah. okay i'm going to i'm going to show you another one this was taken in Pennsylvania in a swamp. Let's see here.
So that's a fourth different. That looks different yeah. than the, the other three. That does. Let me uh, switch to different angles on it. Now that cast from Honey Island, you can almost see the tendons along the toes on that. That's what well, you, really that, looks that's, weird to me. A cast does not necessarily represent the foot. Yeah. Uh, what you get there on the Honey Island is, and I'll show it to you. People say it's webbed. Mm -hmm. Let me get over here. There. You see, it looks webbed, but that's over pour. Mm -hmm. In other words, they poured the plaster between the toes out on the ground between the toes to kind of give it strength yeah. so that the toes wouldn't break off. So it's really not actually webbed. And this one is a second gen copy. In other words, it took a copy and made another copy. So it's had over pour twice. But that almost makes it look even more weird than it would if it was webbed. Though. Yeah, it, 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 it is weird. That That's my point. It's it's not uh, what you would call a, a a typical Bigfoot or even typical primate. Mm -hmm. It does have this little bitty small uh, kind of a vestigial. I don't know if I'm getting it right or not. Yeah, off to the side. Mm -hmm. Is that it right there? Yeah. Can you see it? Uh, but it's almost useless for anything. That's why I call it vestigial. But it, it, uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, it, to, to, to reach out for some explanation uh, in the natural world. If it, it's gonna, it's gonna be some more like a sloth. <laughs> Well, isn't uh, aren't there tales in South America of a, of a giant, a gigantic bipedal sloth? Mm -hmm. Well, they call it Mapinguari. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the uh, there's all there was more than one type of ground sloth. The the sloth that we think of today lives in the trees. It's very slow. But the ground sloths were not like that. And they were plenty fast. And they could tear you up too. Uh, certainly something to be feared if you if you had one. Now I have a, a claw from a ground sloth. It's fossilized. Let me look at that right here. That's a good size claw. And it looks like it yeah. broke even. So yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it broke off the foot. It's got that first little piece of bone. You can see the crescent shape on it. Yeah. So that's not oh, even right. as big as it's supposed to be. It's difficult to hold that thing up to this camera because I don't I can't see what the camera's doing. And we're getting a pretty good look at it. Yeah, okay. I'll try to get this uh, problem run down, fixed with my computer, but it's a brand new computer and I'm sure it's got something to do with Windows. Uh, so this, uh, Mr. This, this, this gentleman, and there's another, another fellow, I'm going to show you his. All righty. Let's look at these. See if I can do this. This is in snow, but it is in a swamp. Can you see any of those? Mm hmm. Sure can. Look at that one. Yeah.
That looks a lot like the last one you held up. It does. It does, don't it? That's how big it is. That's a good size track. Yeah. Uh, mine that I found down there was about this long. But but it was a little wider. And like I said, you, you don't know because of the snow and because of the the substrate, you know, the, the right. clay. Uh, how it, Sometimes you can pull up on moist clay and it'll actually draw together. Mm -hmm. uh, from suction, you know. Well, one thing I find really interesting about that track there in the snow is the Honey Island track itself. You could, you know, you could certain you could draw certain similarities to alligator tracks, but there's no alligator tracks are going to be found in the snow. No, uh, that looks very much like a sloth. It really does. Now, I'm not going to say that that it is one, but I'm saying that if it's if the answer is not in the in a in a the simplistic line of thought, then it must be in the more abstract. Well, that makes a certain amount of sense. I mean, you know, there's still sightings of the Mapinguari. So if this is if this is a distant relative or a modern relative of a ground sloth. That explains the tracks. Uh, or a type of ground sloth. Maybe not exactly mm -hmm. like the Mopping Glory, but there was a lot of variation. And it, the ones that we have now that are alive are look totally different from the ground sloths. You know, they can move very slowly and stay in the trees mostly. They're excellent swimmers, and I, I, I take a note of that. Uh, the sloths, even the ones we have today, are excellent swimmers. I, wa I want to tell you, when I was down there last, I, I came across this lady. And she was talking to me, and she says, 25 years, she's a local person. She said, 25 years ago, I was in a boat with my dad and my mom. We were headed to the spillway down the canal. And we saw something swimming across, you know, perpendicular across the canal. And we came all the way up on it, and they had to stop and let it swim. And it, they took it to be some kind of muskrat in the way that it was swimming with its head out of the water. And it wasn't the arms, you know, you were just, they were just making uh, currents under the water. Mm-hmm. That's exactly like a sloth. That's exactly how they swim. She says, it came out to the edge of the bank and came out of the water and they expected something like a, a muskrat, you know. But she said it kept coming out of the water. And when it got up on that bank, it stood up and she said she knew that it was at least seven feet tall. And it turned around and walked up that bank on two legs and two. And it was at the right at the spot where I found my track. Hmm. And she didn't even know that I'd found a track there. So it gives you an idea. Well, I think that also gives us a great idea of why that tracks are three toed. Well, that would be uh, something that would appear, at least appear three-toed mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a lot of cases. You know, uh, like I said, uh, it doesn't necessarily represent the foot every track. Right. Uh, yeah, you can get an idea on a trackway, you know, enough tracks. But uh, a lot of times, you know, they hit the ground, they slide or, or they move or they pick up one side before they pick up the other. You roll the foot, all kinds of things. Uh, that ch that will change the uh, the way a, a track looks. These megafauna ground sloths were they were they carnivor carnivorous? Were they herbivores? Were they? Omnivores? I think I, I I'm not really sure, and I don't think anyone else is either. They ate they ate from the tops of trees. I mean, the really big ones. Uh, but they were dangerous. 
and was considered to be dangerous. So they, they weren't, they haven't died out all that long ago. Right. Uh, they found the skin of one in a cave in uh, Patagonia. And they said, they estimated that skin was about in the hundreds, not the thousands of years. You know, so it's so entirely that, possible that remote populations may still be out there. Right, right, exactly. And uh, the southern part of the, of the around the Gulf of Mexico is, is, is with all of its travel and all of its ports around there, can have just about anything dropped off. You know, uh, that area where Honey Island is, uh, John Lafitte hid out in there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's some uh, 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 Civil War. Uh, there were people that were on the run that hid out in there. No one could find them. Um, it's, it was uh, just uh, numerous. So anyone who were, they found a Phoenician writing on some stones in this lady's yard in the lower Pearl River, right close to the, to the opening into the Gulf. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they kind of, they, they don't like talking about that, but they, they, they think that the Phoenicians got the wrong river that they had been, had a camp spot or a village at the mouth of the Mississippi where they would come and pick up copper from up your way that were brought down the river and then take it to Europe. And they now know that a good bit of the copper from up in the great lakes area was went to Europe. You yeah. know, they found out they found the old mines and they went over there and it's a certain type of copper with a certain composition and, they tested it, and it, it was indeed from you know, North America. Yeah. Well, they that was one of the export places down there. So the traffic went up and down the rivers, and uh, they got the wrong river set, set by the mouth of the Pearl for a while until nobody showed up. Uh, so that's, they, that's what they think. But you won't find that in a book. They will dare put that in a book. There's but it's actually so many things like that that are that are that are that we've learned, but it would set modern science on its ear, so they don't even talk about it. Right. They they prefer not to talk about it because unless it unless they unless they were prepared to to set things right, you know, mm -hmm. they they won't they won't talk about it at all. Uh, you can find this on YouTube, though. It's it's a Robert, uh, Robert D wanted to know. He says, "Could they be walking with one or two toes off the ground at times?" I, I think possibly. You know, uh, a sloth foot is kind of curved. It, they kind of walk on the side of their foot, and so that you look at the ones in the snow, they they look like they. You see, some of them are kind of curved. Mm -hmm. with a, they got a big a broad toes and then it goes to almost nothing and then a heel um which uh let me go back to that one here it is i'll show it to you again yeah see what i mean that that could be a sloth yeah So, you know, uh, that interest, uh, Harlan Ford said that they went over to where they had seen it. This is the first time he had seen it. And there were scratch marks on the tree in front of it where it had been up the tree and came down and left these uh, scratch marks on it. So uh, he assumed that it stayed in the trees, but it may or may not have. Who knows? Something that big. Yeah. Hiding in a tree and terrifying me to walk under something like that. Oh, but well, bears that, do. Bears do. True. Looking yeah, at that last picture that you just put up, I, I don't want to see it the first time, but what you were talking about about their feet, it that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like it started off on the side of its foot, and that's why you've only got that uh, 
that little see how it's kind of offset da but it yeah. started off on the side of its foot and as it come forward it rolled forward onto the front the front see how it kind of mm -hmm. flares out right there it's like it started off on that the right side of its foot and as it went forward it rolled off and that's where you get the front part of the foot and that's why it's kind of offset towards the back end that's the way i see it um yeah. so w whatever they are they still preferred the the swamp even though it was in the more northern uh area and the climate was different colder uh it, it still preferred the bogs uh you know uh it's it's kind of funny because uh, over in ireland where bogs are a big deal mm -hmm. and they get they dig peat out of them and occasionally they come across these people that have been strangled or whatever and they threw them out in the peat bogs and they may be a thousand or two thousand years old perfectly preserved by the peat and they would they would anything that that was unexplainable in a in a swamp or a bog they would refer back to those things they would call them boggers and uh, and and the spirit of the bogger, like when they saw a light, whether it was swamp gas or whatever, uh, they would say that's the spirit of the bogger. And whenever they came to North America, and, and especially in the southeast, they they still had those beliefs, and they they would see things that they could not explain and they would say that's a bogger and it it got eventually kind of perverted into booger but that's where that term came from booger uh was from the irish and they brought that here from similar experiences they had in the, in the peat bogs my, it, my it, family's all, all scots irish and when i was a kid my grandparents used to tell me stay out of the woods at night the boogers will get you Right, right, and it, it it they they darn well meant it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a uh, just playing around. My great grandmother uh, used to tell me the same thing. And uh, if if it if it if they saw that it it had hair on it, they could see the hair. They call it a woolly bogger. Woolly uh, bogger. Uh, right. I've you heard know, the term it, woolly bogger my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if uh. If J.R. Tolkien or J.R.R. R. Tolkien used that, it, do you think back? I think it was maybe the Fellowship of the Ring when they were they had that scene, and you have to think about it from the movie because most people haven't read the book because the book is way more descriptive on it. But there's a scene where they kind of get pulled down into that bog by a bunch of spirits. Of, I wonder if that's where he got well, the inspiration for that. Well, Tolkien drew heavily on on Norse mythology, so it wouldn't surprise me. And if you you know you look at the description of what uh what they refer to in Europe as the wood woes or the wild men, it's mm -hmm. very similar to the description they used in in Beowulf talking about Grindel. So I, I think there's there's a case to be made that Grindel from from uh, from Beowulf is a type of Bigfoot. Well, we've talked about that several times before. And like trolls and things like that, just being Norwegian, Scandinavian, whatever. Just their versions word for of it. Yeah, just their versions of, of, you know, just like we talked about the Mapinguari earlier, uh, mm -hmm. Orang Pendak, uh, Yowie, Yaren. I mean, wherever you go, there's, there's a term for it, but most people describe it exactly as how we describe Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever. So, the uh, the uh, Honey Island Honey Island description is a little different, uh, and in sometimes in in the behavior, uh, it it eviscerated wild hogs without eating them. It just it just killed them and open opened up their throats and uh, left them there, and uh, that's something that Harlan Ford was not used to seeing. And he was 
amazed that it something had gone at it with that kind of a. Uh, uh, they, they seemed to enjoy it, uh, but it didn't want to eat it. So it, it kind of indicates that it was a, uh, it was not on its diet. You know that it, it but it wanted it dead. Mm. And uh, to have weapons like that, you know, that you could almost like knives. You know, a hog's probably not a, the easiest thing to take down physically. No, they're pretty tough. Yeah. We raised hogs as a kid, and that's a mean animal when it gets set off. Yeah, we have a lot of <laughs> hogs around here. Wild hogs. Uh out toward in the swamps, not up in the hills. They don't they don't come up in the hills much. Um, here's that marker. Let's see. Let me let me see. Let me see if I can get this thing straight here. Can you see it? Yeah. See you said that it just been freshly broke. Right, it snapped this off. Fresh meat. Let me get, yeah, hold on. You remembered. I remember. It snapped this off, and it took it and snapped it into two and laid an X across the trail. Trail went like this. Do you think that was a warning for you not to follow it, or? I absolutely think so. That you had gotten a little closer than it wanted you to get. And there was no water up in this freshly broken tree right here. And let me show it to you. Okay. I'm here. And this is the trail that goes. And uh, look, there's already some sign of stuff being done here on the trail. Been over and blocked. Fairly fresh. See, it's dry as it can be, and it had only just quit raining. So, it it was no more than 10 minutes old. So, it probably saw me coming. Have you heard any vocalizations from it? None that I could say for sure. You know, my ears are not great. I've spent a whole lifetime in around loud equipment and stuff, and my, they're not in that great a shape. But I've take I've gone with people with better hearing, and they said they could hear it. Uh, let me. There's some more stuff here that I'm looking for, but I'm not really sure where it's at. Right here. Try right here. Let's see here. I was going to try to see if I could find a video. This is uh, November the 2nd. No, that's not it. Your friends that have heard the vocalizations, uh, have have they described them to you? Uh, yeah, they described them to me. It it, it uh, I don't know if how much good it did. Um, how did they describe them? They we they, he had a little dog with him that my friend that he said would bark if it smelled one, and it it opened up 
I could hear the dog barking. He said he could hear the thing responding. But when I got my infrared, that's when I spotted the individual on out of, into the swamp, you know, across the water. Uh, I sat there watching it for 30 minutes and never moved. We hollered at it and tried to throw things at it. We couldn't get anywhere close. Uh, but I figured that if it were anything normal, it was certainly would have run. Uh, you can run a bear off or at least make it move. Mm. <laughs> we saw a video with a bunch of bears running off, didn't we, DA? Yeah, we did. This one dev never moved. Is there, there anyone to play that video? Let's let Mr. Davis see that, see what he thinks of. Where did you sure, send it? I'd love to see it. It's at the uh in the co-host chat. Okay, let me scroll back and see if I can find it. Yeah. It, we're not saying that the sound you're gonna hear is le is legit. I'm not gonna be able to play the sound. Oh, that's fine. But the visual does and it's everybody in the chat can see this too. The the visual does wonders. And I, I don't. I, I'm just gonna let you see it, Mr. Davis. I ain't gonna. Okay. I don't want to put anything in your head. I just want you to see it. With you tell us what you think of it. If he can play it, that is. Yeah, I'm gonna. At the very beginning, you can see a group of bears, and you can hear what almost sounds like the Ohio howl, uh, a, a Bigfoot type howl in the distance. But it's pretty unusual to see a group of black bears like this. It's not not that unusual, but it is weird to see this many of them together, at least from around here, anyway. Well, let me ask you this about that: uh, it's not normal black bear behavior, is it? No. Uh, so, do we know everything there is about black bears? No, sir, we do not. Definitely not. When the sun goes down, it's a whole nother world. And uh, I think that we, <coughs> we meaning man in general, uh, uh, we keep looking for those areas of comfort where we feel comfortable. And that's why we go at it so hard trying to, we know everything about this. We know everything about that. Sun goes down, you start from scratch. You know, it's um, animals will amaze you at what they do. And and under the cover of darkness. Well, even in broad daylight, I mean, like that guy they used to call the grizzly man, uh, who w would go up into Alaska. He went among that group of bears for years, and then the one time he got him and his girlfriend get eaten. But you know, you you can think you know what to expect from a group of bears, and they'll still surprise you. Ab absolutely, uh, bears smart too. Mm -hmm. Uh, they'll come in, break into your house or break into your cabin or whatever you got and get all, get all your salt, and your sugar and your flour and I'll tear up the insulation it, in your refrigerator because right, the formic acid smells like ants. Uh, your, your, uh, they can smell the, uh, refrigerant in a freezer and they will turn the freezer over and claw at that until they let the refrigerant out of it because they they think it smells like honey you know uh how do you smell through those copper lines and stuff you know that that's just absolutely amazing and uh we're dealing with something that's probably a cut above that yeah it's certainly more intelligent yeah. And and maybe those bears were together because of, you know, the unusual situation of having uh, some something like that around them. They decided to pool their resources. Stick together for safety. Yeah. Here's some drawings that people first. Let me show you a comparison with a. Uh, an alligator track. Can you see that? Yep. 
Which one's the, is it the gator track on the left? The whiter one is the gator track. Okay. And then let me ease closer. Can you see them good? Yeah. You see, they're not the same. <laughs> no, nope. totally different. Yeah. Uh, experienced people down there know, know that. But there's other people that are, don't have that experience that will sometimes uh, carry the day. You know. Thank and, you for the super chat, fly by Stu. Uh, is that what the chat's coming up? It's very small. I, I can't hardly see it. That was a super chat. They'd they'd given us a super chat. Okay. Now. There are when you see, when you look at those side by side, there are obvious differences between the two tracks. Uh, but I, I can certainly see why people would think the three toed track. You know, you think of a three toed track in the swamp, you would first first suspect would probably be a gator. But well, a gator right has, out the window when you see the snow tracks. Yeah, you know, the gator has has four toes on the rear foot and five on the front. Robbie, uh, we very, can't hear you. You're muted, buddy. Sorry, cat went nuts again. I had to unmute. I had to mute it. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, four on the front. The number, number of toes. It, so it, uh, even even if it was a gator, it wouldn't be three toed. No, it wouldn't be three toed. Uh, uh, Unless he got he a another gator and it bit one of his toes off. That that could happen. Now they will fight and they'll bite part body parts off. Bite body parts off you. Yeah. Now here are some drawings that different people have done, and this is kind of familiar compared to my. Uh, the one on the top looks like my video. Yeah. My my infrared. <laughs> Let me go to another one. So if you had to guess, you would would you say that the Honey Island Swamp Monster and say the Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot are totally separate totally separate species? Uh, uh that's I don't think that would really be much of a guess. Uh they don't they don't bear any resemblance, not much. Uh, you know, other than being big and hairy. Uh hair. Hair would be the <laughs> the common thing. Uh but there again, the Patterson Gimlin version may not bear resemblance, uh, a, a heavy resemblance, to what they call a true giant or, or a true Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Native Americans around there, I spent a good bit, bit of time on the Hoopa Reservation. And they said that, that they, she's a hybrid, uh, part part human and part whatever was a Bigfoot living there at that time. Apparently, they're enough human that they can be offspring. Uh, rare, but not, but not impossible. And at one, at one time, there were 10,000 Chinese in there, all doing hydraulic gold mining. And they had all of their families sons, daughters, wives, and they're with them. And it was just a set up place for the true giants to snatch somebody when they could. Well, there's lots of stories of Chinese workers being snatched during the construction of the railroad too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you got 10,000 and you're only successful one in a hundred, that's still enough to get a hybrid population going. And if you look at Patty, she's very, her hair is very uneven. It, in some places, she don't have any. In other places, it's thick. It, it, it's kind of a, a hodgepodge. Uh, but if you move out of that area, out of that gold country, you they start to look more like the Paul Freeman video. Mm-hmm. 
Um, the tracks are a little different too. Patty's track looks more like our tracks where the Freeman Freeman uh, track way look has the big sausage toes they call them and they're spread out and the hourglass shape mm -hmm. flat to the ground I, i've got freeman's track right here hold on yeah, the next thing you want, we talked about the freeman footage we've talked about that a number of times about how mm -hmm. the, the bigfoot stops in front of the tree and just disappears from view yeah that is a large track. It is. It's hard to get it in the little window there <laughs> to back it up. Now, I'm not an not any kind of expert on tracks, but Dr. Meldrum has talked about a mid tarsal break. Does that have, exhibit one? <laughs> I've 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 had different opinions myself. Uh, I don't know that I've gotten enough data in on that I, I certainly see where they're they're more flexible than an average one of us would be uh you can tell when they go up a stick or a limb gets up in the area that there's mold to it you know uh i don't know if it's got a separate joint or not you know like uh, like a mid-tarsal break mm -hmm. joint but uh, I'm not an expert in that. So I, I always refer to Dr. Meldrum. Uh, and if he's right, he's right. And he's wrong, he's wrong. But I certainly can't contribute much to that unless I can actually one day actually see one in action. Definitely. That would be, yeah. Uh, flexible foot, yeah. I would say flexible foot, yeah. Uh, I, I could vouch for flexible foot and it may indeed have a mid tarsal break. Uh, here's one taken in Texas. Hold on. You can just kind of see it at, a, at an angle here. Hold it. If I can get it here right. Can you see that one? I'm going to heel first. This is the heel. Yeah. You see, it's got a dip right here heel drove deep and a dip and then back the ball comes back deep again so it's a that could be seen to be a mid tarsal break mm -hmm. and i wouldn't argue with it it's a it's one of those things where you know it's a you're, you're trying to understand a complicated issue with with very, very scant information. Uh, Flyby Stu had a question for you. He says, do you think they molt like a winter coat? Uh, I, I think it's possible. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it with Patty because she didn't have, she didn't have, it, her, she was just haired over. You know, there's plenty of people uh, who almost go to that point, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, it wasn't keeping her warm. You know, it was just, uh, just a hairy person, but mm -hmm. the, the thing, the Paul Freeman, now that's a different matter. You can see that thing has got a good coat of hair and whether it's got a, a you know, the, the two coats of hair, you know, the undercoat and the guard hairs and all that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, but it's, uh, that's an intriguing, intriguing thought. It, it's, it stays, it's, it's got some kind of method for, for weathering the, the cold without, without much of a, you know, uh, it's not, it's not taking them down. You know, they can just stay out in it. Mm -hmm. And whether that's a, some something to do with the internals or, or whether it's hair, maybe they, it, it's, they're, they're, they're dealing with it. Yeah, they're built for the environment. Yeah, you see, even that three-toed we saw up there, the tracks in the snow. 
You know how cold snow is to your foot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're kind of soft, you know, but uh, they're not nothing soft about them. That's true. Trying to see these are some old pictures I took of a, a long time ago. That's a picture that I drew, and I'm no artist, but I just kind of used my what knowledge I had of it. Can you can you make anything out of it? Mm -hmm. See the mane of hair, large amber eyes. Mm -hmm. Based on the descriptions, can <laughs> that's a pretty. I'm no artist, like I said, but that's a pretty. Uh, I, I, you know, you, I, you don't know where it really whether you want to run across it or not. No, definitely not. <laughs> I came in behind that one, but I was close enough that it made me very nervous. What am I saying? Yes, I would. <laughs> well, you know, whether it's a Bigfoot or, you know, a dog man or whatever the cryptid, I'm not sure I'd want to run into one running around a corner in a, in a dark alley. I, I would definitely want to be prepared before running nose to nose with one. Let's see. Hold on just a minute. Let me see if I can find this one particular picture. Okay. Sounds good That's to me. Uh, trip to uh, yeah, over 60. Uh, not there. Um, what's that? <laughs> oh, yeah. I came two nights in a row in the same week. Oh, well, actually, it was it was two nights in the same week, not in a row. And the first time we were going down that trail, and I tripped over this log, and just about dug my face into the earth. And I got up, dusted myself off, kept going, and then we left sometime later, and. A few nights later, came back down that same trail. When I got to that log, something had taken one of these, you know how a log will splinter and leave a plank of wood just laying out there? They took that plank and drove it into the ground right there beside the log, and about six or eight inches deep. Dang. And, and like it was marking the spot. And it, that made me wonder if I, we weren't being followed or observed or, you know, the previous night or the previous trip. Uh, I took a picture of it. That's what I was trying to find. <laughs> broken limb, broken. River pick, second tree break. Fisherman's Landing. I don't know where I put all these things. I mean, I got uh, so many pictures. I always try to document, you know, a trip. <clears throat> Old photos. Game cam videos.
online the area of the Well, anyway, we can just go on and discuss other things. I, uh, if I come across that, I'll show you. Okay, not a problem. Now, they're down in, in, the, in the swamps down around that area, down around Honey Island, that's not the only creature that's being spotted. I mean, you've got the Cajun Rougarou. Uh, you've got stories of, of Bigfoot. Uh, and one that I've, I've run across, I first heard about it in an old episode of, of uh, Kolchak the Night Stalker, and I thought it was just made up for the show, but apparently it's not. It's something that they, they talk about, the Spanish moss monster, the uh, Paramalfe. Spanish moss monster? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not familiar with that one. I, I used to think it was just something they made up for the show, the Night Stalker. Uh, but the more I've dug into it, apparently it is a Cajun legend. Usually, uh, they said usually from the the fairly deep swamps, uh, about a boogeyman that'll come and take you take you if you're not if you don't behave. And it's described very Bigfoot like. <clears throat> that uh, here here I found the picture. Hold on, you get lucky sometimes. No, uh, no, right here. Uh. Can you see it? Yeah, where it's been driven into the ground. You said about six yeah. inches. That that was not there the previous. I, I trip right there at that spot where that stick is. Mm -hmm. And when we came back, that was there. You see, it's a like a plank. Has it been like like, um, for example, uh, like someone use a hammer to drive in the ground or? It, 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 it looked like it, it It was just driven down with force. I was trying to find a way to get closer to it. I lose sight of it and I can't tell if I'm on it or not. Am I on it? Yeah. Yep. See the bottom of it right there? Mm -hmm. See, it's driven deep. Go up to the top here. Should have brought it doesn't it home. look. It doesn't look like something like used a hammer or a rock to drive. No, it in. oh no, it's, it looks it's like it was just grabbed and stuck in the ground. Yeah, it's got a sharp, you know, kind of a. You can tell it's a plank, you know, from being either torn off by the force of the fall of the log or something. See that top? It's no hammer been used on. Right. What do you what do you think that was like a warning or? Ah, uh, it, it it was at least in some measure a communication of some sort. Mm -hmm. It knew that I fell on that log, and it just like say, "Hey, you know, I saw you." So it was definitely watching you, even though you didn't know it was there. Right. The first time I know I was probably observed, you know, with that with that X across the trail. This is the same trail much further along. And I must have been observed then too. So it got that message across to me. Yeah, as, definitely. Primitive, as primitive as that is, it is it is a little message. I think how there's a lot do you of think, things that happen like that. How close do you think you might have been to it without you knowing it? Well, that's you got to be fairly close because it's that's thick area in there. You know, uh, something don't have to be close, far away to hide because it's a lot, it's brushy. Yeah. And uh, so it was... It could have easily just been, you know, 30 feet, 40 feet, and just following along. We, like I said, nighttime is, is not our, it's not our time to be there. We, we carry these little lights and we get these little peeps into their world, but we don't see very much of it. 
Mm -hmm. Kind of gives you the uh, the pretty good ind indication that had it wanted to hurt you, it could have. Yeah, I think that might have been the message too. Just to let me know that I was really out of my league. Kind of like counting coup. Yeah. So I was out of my league. I got quite a few uh, versions of that stabilized thing on all four, th fours three times. Let me look at it. Let's see. Let me get you there. It's a hot body, but it don't move. <laughs> it would have been a lot clearer if it had been closer. It was just a long ways out across there. I'd have had to swim the, uh, the bayou there to get to it. And that's not a great great thing to try to do in the dark. That's not a good uh, thing to do in the daytime. <laughs> no, I'll dark. take a big old pass. I'm not swimming in the bayou, period. It's uh those not bayous really. they harbor a lot a lot more than just that. Also, uh when I got up to the the locks, that's how we used to get across the canal to walk at the top of the locks. Uh, I sat there and I watched with my, with my infrared and something huge came up under the water. And of course that the infrared sh shows differences in temperature. Mm -hmm. So this, this showed as being dark, not white. It was cold blooded or or either because it was underwater. And it looked like a submarine. I ain't kidding you. Uh, I'll show you a picture of it. Maybe it was a, a gator. It was it was less than 40 degrees. I, I, gators don't usually come out and feed at all in that temperatures. Uh, they lay low on the bank. Or in a in a hole. Uh, here, let's see if I can show it to you. There, can you see it? Yeah, that black dark object right there. See how mm -hmm. big it is? It yeah. chased a, it a fish jump right there. That's what that is. You see, the fish came out as heat because it came out of cold water. And it hit the atmosphere, and it became a different a different temperature. We got a squatch nest monster over there. Yeah, this right here is under the water. <laughs> Would you want to get, even try to go out there with that thing? Whatever it I'll, is. I'll pass. Ooh. I mean, this thing was huge. Uh, every, I, I've tried a hundred times, I bet, to find another one like that. You know, I'd look and see if I could find, you know, what it was. If I, I always try to compare, you know, try to figure out what it is. And alligator came across my mind, but I just, I don't know of an alligator that could come out in those temperatures. I mean, it was, you, it was cold. Yeah. Now, they'll come out in the sun and let the sun warm them up in the daytime. But that, the underwater actively feeding at night, with it that cold? Nah. They don't even need to feed when they get cold. You know, they just, they have no need for food. Their metabolism is so low. Yeah, they just kind of shut down. They shut down, yeah. 
But that one wasn't shut down. Whatever it was. How big do you think it was? As long as a boat. Or at least. That's a good sized critter. Yeah, it's big. I got some video of it, but I don't know if I, I got it here. Swimming thing, thing on all fours. Crazy. Underwater thing. I guess I got it somewhere else. Uh, I, think it I could really have been a shark. You know that's possible. That it's not that far from the Gulf. Uh, I know they, they found bull sharks in the Great Lakes. Yeah, bull sharks. Bull sharks that come up in fresh water. Yep. That that's a good that's a good possibility. And that would be feeding no matter what the temperature was. Yeah, they 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 can stand cold water. Well, I tell you what, I've had some good adventures down there. Uh, Sounds like it. Yeah, uh, I've I put a lot of time in down there. The early days, uh, I, I didn't really produce much except for that shoe, you know, with the uh, rubber footprint mm -hmm. on it. And I thought that was the end of the matter. But uh, as it turns out, I was wrong. And that uh, I was I was glad and happy to try to get some of that corrected uh, uh, for uh, Dana's sake. I think your 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 uh, your ground sloth idea. I think that holds a lot of water. I think that that makes it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it 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 fits what you see, uh, and of course the, the possibility is that it's something no one has ever seen or knows about. True, uh, but. You know, as you progress through your your uh, your brainstorming, uh, that sloth certainly is a fit, feels like uh, a gap there. You know, when we can look back at megafauna and find possible candidates uh, for some of these some of these these sighting reports we're getting of cryptids today, it gives us uh, a real world connection where we can say. You know, you can't dismiss the facts and dismiss saying this doesn't exist when something very much like it once did. Uh, you know, I've been running a game cam for the whole entire year. Uh, I've tried to train myself to use game cams. There's some unique qualities about them that, uh, you know, they kind of, it'll produce videos and pictures that uh, fool you. You know, uh, but there's cer certain things that I've gotten on it that I consider to be uh, cryptid. Uh, if, if you're interested, I'll go to one. Sure. Would love to see yeah. it. Let's see here. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I keep coughing. Game cam. SP. I, I think I'm gonna go. I, 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 I label this chupacabra, uh, but I really don't know. Uh, for lack of a better. Okay, let me get this. Uh, you only see it briefly. It was during a rainstorm, and it just runs from right to left. I'm going to try to get you where you can see it. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute. Now watch it close there. Between those trees. Did you see it? Yep. yep. Move like some sort of dog. It, it, it runs a little bit like a, like a rhinoceros, you know, that little trot. Mm-hmm. You know, that it's what it reminded me of on the warthog. 
Try it again. I can definitely see Warthog. Watch it again. But it has a long, long snout. And I'll show you some pictures that I took off of it. Too bad there's no audio. Then we could hear if it was saying, are you talking to me? <laughs> then we would know. Yeah. Let me see Look if I can get head it. shape on that thing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like the body of a dog and the head of an alligator. I know. I haven't seen it since. Just one time. It was early in the year this year. That's really and bizarre. Then I got a a what a bobcat, but it didn't look like a bobcat normally does. Um, let me go back up here. Game cam. And I think it was on April. Let me see. Bobcat, April 26th. And I'll show you the video. Uh, look at this dude. That's a big bobcat. Yeah, it is. He's, he's a bobcat, but... He's not a normal bobcat. He has no markings to speak of. He's just tawny. And he's huge. He's way bigger and muscular. I've, I've gotten quite a few bobcats on here. That almost looks like a cougar with a the tail. Yeah, it, it, it looked like that there's somewhere down the line, there's been some cross crossing with panther, with the southern cougar. And that this it's got that both both genes in it or both bloodlines. Uh hadn't seen him since either. Let me get a couple of stills. Here's the front foot. Look at the size of the front foot. He's got a big old paw on him. Can you move that to the left a little bit? There we go. Yeah, that's a big old paw. It's it's an, a really uh, you'll see a a, a a a dog bowl, dog food feed bowl, and this is a full size one. That's a full size big one that you get. Yeah, that is a big cat. He's big. It's muscular. Look at the depth of the of the of him across here. Mm -hmm. Across here, that that thing look, would he could take a deer down without any problem. I don't think it does look like he might be a hybrid between a yeah. between a cougar and a bobcat. Like I said, we don't we don't know what all goes on, right? But when you see something like that. You, you you should make a note of it anyway. Right. And it's the same way with cryptids, with uh, the Honey Island Swamp Monster or Bigfoot or anything else that uh, as we make our way through our own lives and we see the odd or unusual, we may not can explain it, but you write it down. Right. You know, write it down, make a note. Uh, if you got a picture, put it in the folder with it. And uh, the explanation might come later. You never know. And that's that's the way I look at it. And that's why uh, I, you, you, I keep a presence in those places. Uh, with game cams, uh, I keep a presence with, uh, with uh, frequent visits to the place like I did the Honey Island. Uh, I've been out to Bluff Creek probably 15 or 20 times. It's uh, it's it's not easy, you know, to hike in there. But how are you going to find out anything? You know? Exactly. Uh, you can only go so far with the, with the guessing game. 
uh, but you get some hard data as much as you can. Put yourself in a position to get lucky. And then sometimes the luck happens. Well, it's, you know, it's one of those things where we can, we can watch YouTube videos and we can read books and we can, do, we can discuss it until, you know, the cows come home. But until you actually come face to face with one, you're never going to have any firsthand information of your own. <laughs> well, this, this hybrid thing with the cat is, is kind of uh, in reference back to the, uh, what the native people said about what Patty was. Mm-hmm. A similar hybrid with with within the human species. Yeah, you know uh, the, the the great big giant, what they call a true <laughs> giant, Bigfoot, and it, and it does make a, an offspring with a human, one out of a hundred tries, or maybe more, and then that offspring makes its offspring a little easier. And then you get varying degrees of humanity or modern man versus uh, something more antiquated, primitive. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see that it could happen because I see things like this. You know, uh, this thing is running around out there and no one knows it's there. Well, we know for a fact that that modern man was able to crossbreed with Neanderthal. Uh, well, they did. They didn't think so at first. Yeah, they, they, did of not, they, they didn't think so at first, but we're we're learning that it was possible. So there may, yet, it. may yet still be things out there that we're not aware of that are close enough to us to be compatible. They denied that. They denied it for the longest time, and it finally DNA forced them to admit it. And and uh, that. The Denisovan cave over there in the Altai Peninsula of Russia, mm-hmm. they found all three. They found Neanderthal, Homo sapien, and Denisovan. All three in that same cave. Now, what, is, what does that tell you could happen? Yeah. <laughs> it's darn right it can happen. Absolutely. So, Mr. Davis, so, you, okay. It is, uh, it's it's ten o'clock, and uh, <laughs> this is where we normally start wrapping things up. Um, okay. I really appreciate you spending the spending the evening with us. I'm sorry we had some technical issues. But well, like that, to, that's my fault. It's not you guys' fault. I'd like I to get you back on and, and do this again sometime soon. Sure, I, I appreciate the invitation. I'd love to. I'm gonna try to get the problems worked out with this computer so I can use my my bigger camera and stuff. Sounds good to me. Well, sir, thank you so much for spending the evening with us. Uh, I, 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 every time we've got you on, it's, I, I learned so much. And this, this, this ground sloth theory is really, it's going to be something that's going to sit with me for a bit. while I, while I think over the implications on this, but it's, well, that's good. It, it's yeah. fantastic. I'm, a, I'm really love things like this that challenge our perceptions because that's the only way we're going to learn more about the, about these, these, these cryptids is by challenging what everybody thinks they quote unquote. know. it's, it's, it's got, there is an explanation. You can just got to get to it. Yep. Absolutely. Well, sir, again, thank you so much for, for spending the evening with us. Um, we're, uh, we're going to start wrapping things up and, and, uh, I can't thank you enough for spending your evening with us. It's, it's well, been appreciate a very, it. very wealth of yep. information, and I thoroughly enjoyed every time you're on the show. Thank you, and I enjoyed it as well. Yes, you sir, have a good night, sir. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Thank you, sir. Folks, we uh, we normally wind the show down with uh, uh, discussing our uh, our our uh, affiliate programs, and then we do the toast. Uh, but I think we're probably just gonna just gonna wrap things up and call it a night. I'm not feeling particularly well. I'm kind of still fighting off that head cold. Uh, check out our, our affiliates at scallywagtactical.com. Use discount code DA Roberts ten. Check out brockblades.com. Use brockblades. Uh, use co- code cryptid ten. Uh, or go to darkangelmedical.com and use use uh, discount code. Sorry, uh, I can't get to my vest quick enough and get. To- <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. 
<laughs> and the uh, the Dark Angel code is uh, what? What is that? Cryptid two five. Yep, Cryptid two five. Cryptid two five. Uh, go by, check all them out, show them some love, and let them know we sent you. And uh, I'm going to skip the toast tonight because, like like I said, I'm I'm uh, I'm still kind of feeling a little under the weather. Uh, we will not be having a show on Saturday night. I'm going to be in Memphis, Tennessee, at a convention called ShadowCon. I may do a bit of a live video from there. We'll see how things go and how how good the internet is. Uh, but I won't be even in Missouri and in, in uh, on Saturday. But we will we'll be back with you guys next Wednesday, and uh, we're going to be announcing a whole line of shows and a lot of guests. And we definitely want to have MK back because it's always an awesome time anytime he's on the show. Uh, so. Folks, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for being with us. Special thanks to Mr. MK Davis for spending his evening with us. We apologize again for the technical glitches at the at the end of the show, uh, at the beginning of the show, and um, and we uh, we appreciate you all sticking with us. Thank you guys for the super chats. Thank you guys for being part of the DAX Machination. Big shout out to the moderators. You guys did an awesome job. Thank you guys so much for being here. So good night, everybody, and we will see you guys in a week. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Catch us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.